backward. Okay, we're just reviewing the question about how does how do donkeys sees the angel? Either either a donkey you have to you have to be of a high spiritual caliber, in which case, how can a donkey see? Or it's dressed it's, it is cloaked in human clothing, and how come everybody doesn't see? So the Ramban suggestion is that perhaps the donkey doesn't see the angel. The donkey just what? Anybody remember? Can sense it. Sense the angel. Senses an angel. The animals. Animals can sense things that humans can't sense. They can sense danger. And he said he, he has a sense that something wants to slaughter it. After all, they got to they start. And so, you know, he's not the mailman, which is the greater danger, but he's the angel. So, um, so, um, so he can sense that. That's one approach Ramban takes. Or the Ramban says, well, this is a ridiculous question. I'm, I'm, I'm reframing it, right? It's a ridiculous question because we asked, how can a donkey see an, an angel? Um, but the next sentence, what does a donkey do? Starts talking. Starts talking. So how does a talking dog start talking? And the, and, and the answer is the, the, the Mishnah says it's one of the miracles that God brought into the world that right before creation began, right before creation ended, excuse me. So this is a, a miraculous thing. So we'll just say that even though the Mishnah only mentions the talk, the mouth of the donkey, but it might also mean the whole experience of the donkey, including the ability of the donkey to see the angel. Okay, fine. Okay, that's part number one. And then the donkey says, "There's a whole little mustard's message of why you hit me. Um, did I ever do anything wrong to you? I, 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 I always, you know, behave. I always behave right. So obviously, there's an issue here. And um, and so that's when the, that's when God does the following. Let's pick up a text there after, after that conversation happens." Um, by God, other night in Abelam, and God uncovered the eyes of Bilam by Yar at Malacha the night of Badarach, and now he saw the angel of God right there, positioned in the in the way, the Charbosh Lufa Biado, with his sword drawn in his hand by Kod by Yishtachul Pav, and he 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 prostrates himself and he bows down to his face because that's what. That's what you do when you're in the presence of an angel of God. You know, why, uh, what's this, what it's about? Why'd you hit your donkey three times? I, uh, you know, I, I've been out here uh, trying to be your adversary. Yarad is a very strange word. Uh, Rashi says literal meaning is equivalent to Harad Haderach Lenegdi. Um, I mean, rapid movement, the, the, the path was moving quickly or whatever in front of me, okay? And the donkey saw me and he turned away from in front, in front of me. These three times, which is translated, if it were it not, that it had turned away from me, that now I would have also killed you and left her alive because the donkey's galloping along or trotting along. And if it hadn't turned away, it would have gone right into sword. the sword mm -hmm. and the sword would be, you know, at, at pretty much human height and would have, and would have and gotten you, right. That's what he says. So, um, just keeping this is an unusual phrase. What should he have said? If the donkey hadn't turned aside, then what? She would have been killed. No? Right. He should have said, if the donkey weren't turned aside, you would have been killed. What's the extra phrase, and she would have been kept alive? Okay? Sparing her. Um, so what are we supposed to know about the donkey right now? Just put that in a question mark for yourselves, Okay. And uh, Bilam, Bilam is, is, is brought to contrition by Yomer Bilam El Malach Nechatati. I've sinned, he says to the angel. I had no idea you were there, right there, positioned in front of me. If now, if you want, if it's bad in your eyes, I'll turn around. Okay. So let's just pull back and ask the question: What? Um, well, actually, two questions. Uh, yeah, let's read one more verse. By Yemamalach on the Nile Balam, Lechim and Hashim. The angel says, Go with the Bilam, go with the people. The F is the bar, said the bear, the bear, the bear, the bear. But only the exact words which I tell you, that's the words you're going to say. 
and Bilam went with the dignitaries of Balak, which then raises back in our, in, our, in our minds the question of, wait a minute, who else was there? Bilam, donkey, who else? Dignitaries. Two, uh, two lads, two, that were told two, two lads, lads, right? And the story opens this section with the with the with the dignitaries of, of, of Balak and and returns you to them on the other side. And now you have the question: what did they see? And how does it play out? Let me ask you this question. If um you're one of you're one of the Sare Balak, <clears throat> and you watch this transpire, this come down. What's your thought? So what are you thinking? The woman's losing it. <laughs> yeah, he's talking to imaginary. He's hallucinating. He's talking to Okay, okay. Talking right. So they might not see with his... <laughs> <laughs> with his if they if, if they can see everything that's happening. So if they can't see if they can't see this bizarro situation where he's where he's fighting with a donkey and and and, and but they can't hear the donkey speak because this is only very, very limited, right? Um, and they don't see an angel in front of him. He's, he's, he's flailing his hand and he's like, oh, and then he bows to the ground, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Right? So you gotta say, this guy is whack, okay? This guy's nuts. If they see and hear everything, they're privy to it, then what are they thinking? Hashem is uh, not, a for, he's a force to be reckoned with, maybe? Who is? Hashem is. Hashem is a force to be reckoned with. And Bilam. Must be important. I don't know. Bilam is, 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 is a dud. He's the donkey. What's happened here, right? He's been, he's been, he's been, uh, you know, shamed by his donkey. And chastised by an angel, and whipped into shape by God, and he can't do anything. And so, uh, if I were them, I'd say, "This is a big mistake. What are we bringing this guy for? Right? Either, either it's a he's a clown, he's a fraud, he's or or he's or he's neutered or he's controlled, right? And so, and then you have to say, like, so why are they bringing him? Well, is he, is he, I mean, I don't know, but I, I mean, in some way, is he a conduit? Is he a vehicle? Like, why would, why is God associating with or through him? So the fact, the fact that God is actually dealing with him is still gives you some sense that he's got, he, he is a, a, a force that you want to somehow have with you, right? That's a possibility, right? Uh, but let's presume they actually conclude that he's not, this is not, he doesn't have the, the goods here. In the end, why are they there and why are they bringing him back? They were told by their boss, Balak. Because Balak told them to do this. The king sends you on the mission and you, you carry it through, right? right? You show up to the king and either you put a good face on or you, or you, or you, point, you know, and you're standing behind Bill and you're saying, <laughs> no, this is a bad right. So one way, but but they they have to continue this mi mission because they are the king's emissaries, and the king wants this guy big time. Okay, the third possibility is they missed the whole story. Let's take a look at their Ramban and see what their Ramban does here. Hold on, let's bring it up. Uh, not this. Hold on. Pardon me. Okay. Yes, says says the Ramban. Dan, you want to read it for us? Now, scripture does not say. Oh, you're, you're unmuted. Now, sc scripture does not say whether Balak's prince who are present with Balaam at these events, 
or it may be that they were riding ahead of him and there was a considerable distance between them and him so that they did not notice any of these events. The most likely interpretation, however, is that they were together with him because they did not become separated from him and they saw the ass turning aside and Balaam smiting her, but thought that she was merely behaving as bad animals do because they did not hear her speak and they certainly did not hear the words of the angel who was visible only to the opened eyes of Bala. So possibly number one is that they miss it because they're, you know, they're a half a, you know, a half a kilometer ahead. Possibly number two is they see it, but they just see um, a guy dealing with a, with an animal that sometimes can get obstinate, right? And that's what's all that's going on. They can't hear anything that's going on. And then the third possibility is, read that as well, Dan, our rabbis have said, uh, but our rabbis have said that the princes, the prince of Moab was astonished because they saw a miracle, the likes of which has never occurred in the world. So, wow. So that's the third possibility we hadn't thought of, which is maybe it goes a little bit back to what Liz was saying. This is all, look at this, this, this guy and he brings miracles. Look at this talking donkeys and, and, and angels there. And they're just wowed by all this. They miss the fact that this is there. That there are lessons being taught here to you know to Billam and the reader. Um, they all they do is see. Ooh, God thought it was important enough to show up. This is pretty special. What's that? What's that line in uh, in Fiddler on the Roof? If uh, when from Sarah, you know, came all the way from the other world, uh, <laughs> you know, to tell us something that we got to you know we got to take it you know, take it seriously. So um, like okay. So they're, they're super impressed because they saw something really cool and miraculous today. And, it, and maybe it only um, increases his stature in their eyes. Could be. Um, um, go ahead, Liz. All right. I just have a question and like sort of a foundational like um, prequel kind of question. Maybe this was covered last week, but like why is Bilam going with them? I don't know why. Yeah, we just spent some time on that. Um, he's going because a combination. What are the, what are the reasons, guys? Money. He wants a, he either wants greed. A big payoff. Either greed because um, he, he's you know he, and he firstly he wants more covered and he wants he wants to cover from it and he wants money that's going to come with it, or because and this is the other certain part that the Chachamim read in this, he really wants to harm the Jews. Right, he really wants to play that role, and um, the first one becomes, you know, he, he, you know, God can perhaps support him. Does he want to make a buck? All right, I'll help you make a buck. But uh, the second one that he wants to harm the Jews, it's going to always be, you know, working a counter. Presumably, that he knows that that the Jews are God's chosen people. So, um, what's you know, is he delusion, self delusional that he's going to somehow accomplish this? Certainly, by the time the story is, this part of the story ends, it's made very clear that he's not going to be able to do what? Um, um, right, to act in any way other than exactly that God tells him he must act and say that God says he must do, say, speak. So he's on a very short leash. Now, God's already made it clear to him a few times, but like now it's really, really clear. Um, let's actually sit with this for a second about the message. What is the message of this, of, of this part of the story? Angel in the way, donkey sees it, donkey talks. Um, I mean, What's I'm just away? thinking, well, I, like what strikes me also, maybe this is off, but um, this is a civilization that also like um, fetishizes animals, right? So I find it interesting that a donkey is a key player, right? For civilizations that like you know figurines when you go back in ancient arts they're little animals um so i don't know it's yeah yeah so actually hold that that's going to be very interesting to to what to uh, to piece number three to this question very good okay um so that's that's, that's, a, that's a piece of it what lesson is bill supposed to learn I mean, he's going against the great. I mean, this should be a lesson that you know, really he's not doing the right thing. 
all these signs, the donkey, uh, the, the mala, you know, that, that he, he, he really shouldn't be going on this trip. He shouldn't be going on this trip, right? That that's a that's a lesson that he should have he should be learning. Now, but but interesting, Bobby. Like, so then, let him see the angel himself. I, I know. I get that. I don't understand that either. Where, why does he need the donkey in the story at all? Why does he not? Why does he need not to see the angel at first, and the donkey yes see him? So there's something there, right? So what? Um, I mean, I, I don't. Maybe it's also striking to me or something about um, autonomy and um, control. I don't know, like. Um, so he's trying to control a donkey, thinks he's a big free man and God tells him that right. you're my donkey. Okay, that's partially gonna be there, I think. Maybe um, if he thinks he's, maybe if he was just angel, he's like, well, I'm a prophet, I, you know, I'm on your level. And he needs something else before that to get really get his attention. That hey, look, you know, even the donkey uh, can do miracles, like you know that uh, can see things that he can't see. Donkeys can see what you can't see, and donkeys can speak just like you can speak, right? So, so you know the donkey. Um, I mean, I th also I think it's certainly humiliating um uh experience it is terribly um, humiliating right and so again if the if the if it happens in front of his servants it's 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 humiliation on mm -hmm. level number one which is you're embarrassed in front of your servants right but if it happens in front of the hush of a dig, 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 dignitaries that's embarrassing at a different level and humiliating and forget all those people just humiliating for yourself on its own with a donkey right um and and, and we're not going to be the only ones to know that a dumbass is, 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 is a phrase we use because donkeys mm -hmm. were not seen as very intelligent animals. And, um, and he's been, there's been a comeuppance from a dumb animal, right? In all of this. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's look at the, at, at the this discussion in, 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 in Bahor Shore and then in the Nechamba Labor. So two really diff slightly different ways to, to read this. Um, I, I, have, I didn't look carefully at the translation. This is, this is a cut and paste translation. I hope it actually is accurate to the, to the text. Um, Dan, uh, Bob, you want to read it? But Tate, how tell uh, the she has turned uh, away? Uh, the she has turned from the path and walked in the field. Bilaam's desire to curse the Israelites was so strong that he was blind to any indications which were designed to deflect him from his purpose. Anyone else in his place would have noticed if not for the first sign, then the second sign, or at least the third sign. So, so pause for a second, right? You're you want to do something which is morally um, questionable. I'm not going. You all can think of whatever it is, or or at least not certainly it's a, it's a wise thing to do. And then you, so you go you head off to um, you head off on your on your trip to do it, and and lo and behold, um, there is the, the, the road gets flooded out in front of you. So coincidence, not a sign. Right? Coincidence, not a sign. And then you go further, and there's a tornado which, which swoops up all around, <laughs> everything around you, right? Um, hey, just a tornado. All right. And that's something. Right? So it's not like you're in such denial because you want to do something. Instead of saying, these are Simani. No, no, it's careful. We don't, you know, do we believe in these kinds in, in just these omens or not? Um, and say maybe they're not omens, they're actually direct signs from God. So we usually would stop. So in this case, his the donkey says to him, "Have I have I ever acted this way before? That I've been so erratic and jumped off the road and this and that. Like I haven't. And it's not merely a question of like why are you being mean to me, but it's like, did you not think the first time that there must must be something going on? And it relates to the fact that you're on this journey that you jumped up to do in the morning, and they kept on going. So he is in a denial." of this, and this is meant to point out to him how deep his denial is about the, you know, about what he shouldn't be doing. Go on, Bilaam the seer. Uh, Bilaam the seer was so blind on this occasion that he ignored even the clearest indications that his mission was not to be crowned with success. 
it's, it is almost inconceivable that an individual whose profession was the interpretation of all unusual phenomena who interpreted every inconsistency in nature should not have realized that he was being given the grossest, the grossest, Gro gross, possible, here mean, gross means enormous, sorry. doesn't mean disgusting, right? Gross, right, yeah. Uh, grossest possible hints of God's displeasure. So if you're, if you're a prophet, and certainly if you are a, um, a sorcerer, right, who is there analyzing entrails and, uh, and, and, and animal bones, so you're looking for things that are out of the ordinary, come on, guy, why are you missing this? Yeah. Yeah. Even, okay. the power, even the power of speech? Yep, even the power of speech, which the Shia suddenly displayed, did not stun him into realizing the error of his way. He should have realized what Moshe was told in, in Exodus 4.11 when he used his speech impediment as an excuse not to accept the position of leader of the people, that God can grant the power of speech to whomever he wants to just as he can withhold it from those who possessed it. Right, that's what God says to him then. Right. Okay. The the fact so, the guy, so the, 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 the humbling message is, God says, Mr. Billum, you think you're big shot, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna use your, you're gonna use your words to go, all right, look, I can make a donkey talk too, okay? The fact that Billum did not display. The fact that Billum did not display the slightest amazement at the ass talking is his greatest indictment. All right, he doesn't say, this is whoa, what is this? Mazet, right? He just <laughs> answers the conversation like, really? Okay, this is why eventually, this is why eventually the angel had to reveal his presence to him and had to address him directly, telling him that as of this time, he had to continue on his way, but could only say what he was told to say. The reason Balaam had offered to abandon his journey and to return home was that once he had seen that even his ass could talk, he realized that his so-called power of speech was quite meaningless. He could no longer boast of his power of speech. So it's very interesting. What we would read generally as, if this is a bad thing, I will turn around right now as a statement of, oh, if this is, you know, Hashem does not will me to do this, it's right. But instead, it is, he has had, this is a rupture of his sense of self so deep, right? To, and, and he's meant to be, right? He says like, mm -hmm. I'm a nothing. And then God says, Mr. Nothing, now I'm using you for my purposes. And the rest of the story is God using Billum for what he wants to accomplish. Although Billum's going to have, still have some volition that he's going to employ, um, that's kind of how the rest of this, the narrowest part of the story happens. Nechama Leibowitz has a different angle on this. Liz, you want to read Nechama? Uh, sure. Um, <clears throat> this then is a lesson of the story of uh, Billum's ass and the threefold repetition of the phrase, and the ass saw the angel of the Lord. We excuse me, we may now more readily appreciate the view of those of our commentators who interpret the dialogue between the man and the ass as the Torah's scornful commentary on the imaginary powers ascribed to the sorcerers and its mockery of human gullibility in believing in the power of the magician to curse and subject the supernatural to his will. So what does she do with this? What's the, what's the purpose of the story? So the first, we just read that the Rabbi Bachia's read of is that the purpose of the story is to teach Bill a lesson, right? And to have drive home to him just about just how, how much he, he, is, he has no, no innate skills and only that which I would give him, right? This one says, who's the story for? It's, it's for the others to teach them that sorcerers are a joke. They're, it's for, they're it's for the reader, right? right. It's, it's, yeah. for, it's for us who read the Torah text and everybody's right, right? To know to, to, it's, it's, it's a mockable story. So it's a purposefully mockery story to tell you, look at, look at this Narish kite about people who are sorcerers, and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. and even a donkey this, and sorcerers are, are, are crock, a bull, whatever, whatever, right? And that's the point of the story. It's, it is to, to, to make fun of, to make fun of, that whole approach to things, okay? Um, let's get to this last, that last line of, of what the angel says to him. Remember, he says that, you know, if uh, the donkey hadn't run out of the way, 
um, you would have been killed and she would be alive, which leaves us with some impression that what? That she is now dead. Right. Right? It, it, it doesn't have to take you that way, but that's one reading of the text and say, whoa, she's dead. Now, and, 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 so one simple question is, if she's dead, then, then he's going to have to walk on his, you know, walk on foot the rest of the right. way. To, uh, to the, right? so, so that's its own little, a little challenge he's going to have, unless he's going to tell us, you know, one of his lads, uh, hop off and I'm going to ride on your donkey or what's the, <laughs> well, you guys double up and I take your donkey. All right. But, um, but also it's not, you know, is, is it, Why? So that's it's a really interesting midrash. So however much we want to, you know, relate to it. Hold on. What happened to the donkey? Here we go. This is the this is the Tanchuma. Okay, Alex, you want to read it for us as soon as soon as she had spoken. She died, so that the people who would not say, "This is the she asked that spoke and making an object of reverence." Look at that. Wow. Back to what Liz was saying before, right? The talking donkey would become godlike. <clears throat> yeah, it would be a folk. It's it's a miracle. It's a miracle wonder, and mm -hmm. everyone would come to worship it. Um, mm -hmm. So, and that might fit very well into that culture as you described about animal worship. Think about like the Middle Ages. You hear these stories, you know, about you know, the, you know, somebody somebody was healed at some waters, and then suddenly these, these everybody from all across Europe has to come to these waters because now they're the healing waters and. Um, or this person has this, uh, and they come to, and they come to, uh, it becomes an adoration, right? Adoration of an individual or this or that. So God says, I got to kill this donkey because it's going to otherwise be a nightmare of a Vodazaro, right? So one read, go on. Another interpretation. Another interpretation. Like Holy reading. One, blessed be he, was concerned for the honor of that wicked man, lest they would say, this is the very one through which Bilam was struck. Look at that. What does it say here? Wow. So the story was nothing but what to Billam? Humiliating. This is a humiliating mm -hmm. story to Billam. Who, who saw it? His, his, his lads, right. right? Maybe the dignitaries, maybe not. All right. We, the readers, see it. But the Oilam doesn't know this. But if the donkey comes back to town, and then before you know, the, 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 the two lads would say, do you see that donkey? That was a talking donkey. <laughs> and, and what would happen? Bill would be humiliated in front of everybody forever. So to, to save his kavod, it seems, God will do away with this donkey, which is such a fascinating yeah, he's a Russia. He's a wicked man. It says he's a wicked right. man. And yet we're not looking to have him continuously be humiliated in this context. Wow. Okay. And if the Holy One blessed be, now this is sort of a, 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 a Kabbal Homer. Has concern for the honor of the wicked. It is not necessary to say the same about the honor of the righteous. And so it is stated, uh, if a woman approaches any beast to mate with it, you shall kill the woman and the beast. If the woman sinned, how did the animal sin? It is simply the calamity came, came to the woman through it. Hence, the verse says, kill it. All right, that's, that's a very interesting uh, side conversation, which is um, a woman commits bestiality with an animal. So the woman, it's, it's a capital crime to commit bestiality. The woman is put to death and the animal is put to death. So we say, what? Well, the animal doesn't have any volition. How, how are you holding responsible? And the answer is people shouldn't say this is, this is the animal that uh, that was involved in uh, in this act. Okay, hold on. Someone's looking for one piece here. Um, yeah, um, another interpretation. It's a variation on this. Another interpretation is that it is so that the animal should not pass through the marketplace, and people say this is the animal for which X was killed. This is to show the Holy One, blessed be He, is concerned about the honor of the creatures and knows their needs. That's so. It's not about the covet for the uh, for the for the, for the human, but rather. People shouldn't blame the animal and say, there's that animal who got so-and-so killed. Okay. So that's a very, that's a very different read. So, but strange, right? So, so uh, to, to, to protect the covenant of the animal, you kill it. It's a very strange uh, position to take. But, um, so, so the, but you have this possibility that the talking donkey does not live through the end of the story. You say, what a Rahmanis, 
but to the extent that this is a miracle animal that was that was perhaps just brought into this brought in for the purpose of this event, so the role was filled and now it's gone. It goes back to the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to the last part of this, which is God says go. So first the Rashi. In the path that a person wants to go, that's the way you take him, which means that God says, go, because that's really what you want to do. And I'm not going to stop you. But that's like, that's like narrow. Says the Sephorno. Bobby, you want to the Sephorno? Do not go following your own agenda, but go with them as if you are there only at their request so that they will not kill you reneging. So first is Leich Im Hanashim, he means I go with them and not at their lead. Right. You know, because you were too eager before, you go because you're 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 going with them at their request. And and I know that you have to go because you actually are you are endangered if you don't. This mm -hmm. is a big honor thing, and that is a light. There's a, this is a deadly serious request. The king of Moab has called for you. Doesn't necessarily mean simply, and we want to honor you. It is that you are expected to be here. And if you suddenly turn around, you're actually endangered. So we want to protect you. Okay. But, are, but only what I say, in spite of, go ahead. In spite of all that has transpired, I am not afraid that you will actually act against my interests as the fact is that you will not be able to do anything other than what I will command you. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you going because you can't, can't, you can't pull a fast one on me. I'm God, right? So I'm not afraid of you actually going forward. I, I taught you some lessons, but go. The Ramban reads it a little differently, which is that if God has to tell him again and again and again and again, you must do what I tell you. Um, one second. Second, yeah, that's why I said, let's just read the bottom paragraph. Um, uh, Alex, you want to read it? Do you mind? Go with the men, go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, thou that thou shalt speak. It is possible that he means to say, Go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt, shalt speak. And you should inform them of this limitation of your powers. That's the most important line. You got to tell them that you are, that you are not able to do what you know, and which, which is the reason why we said God was angry, right? Because He did not tell them the last time that He was under God's control, and he, right, you must tell them exactly that you will only say what I say. Okay, and then Bill says, "Well, if that's the case, if it displeases you, then I'll go back, right?" So that's that's the whole point. He says, "No, go, and you'll tell them that." Now let's just skip to let's skip for a second, and I want to see what happens. Let's save this one second. Save the changes, and then we'll call it a night. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Um, by Yishma Balaki Bavilam, and Balak heard that Bilam was coming. Vayetzei the Kartol Ir Moab, and he went to meet him at the Ir Moab Asher Al Gavul Mar Arnon Ashebitzei Gavul. It is apparently right there on the border. Um, Arnon would have you. Um, northern jordan okay at the at the at the border and he meets him at ir, ir moab which apparently it's like the metropolis of moab um which the midrash says he wants him to see just how much this look at our whole beautiful society which the israelites are threatening which of course israelites are not threatening but they're still somehow afraid of them anyway so then he finally can speak to him individually and he says to him hello shalom shalom you know, look at this. I sent, I had to send twice. So I've sent a bunch of times for you. Why didn't you come? So, so you know, so readily. Um, I really can't honor you. So he's still using language from before the story of the chastening of Bilam. Okay. And Bilam responds, chasten. Instead of saying, ha, 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 yes, I'm here. He now says in a chastened way, bottom line, I'm here. Now, can I even say a peep of a word? 
the word which God puts in my mouth, that's what I'm going to speak. He has... Um, he gets right to it, and he does exactly what God tells him. Make it clear that you're under God's control. That all being said, lady and gentlemen, um, um, the next part of the story is interesting to determine whether or not Bilaam is still going to try to maneuver things. Um, that's what we'll do, God willing, next week. Sound good? Okay. okay. Great. Scratch everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. Nothing to bark at.